Hi everybody. Hey, I ran across something on Facebook yesterday uh, that I thought I'd share with you and then comment on, and it won't be the kind of comment that you're expecting, I think. Here it is. Imagine a second-born son who rises to prominence in the wake of his older brother's death. Considered dashing in his youth, this son is a narcissist who at last has his father's eye. The son spends more lavishly than the father ever imagined has a sense of loveless, uh, sorry, has a series of loveless marriages that are more for show, rises to lead his country, and becomes a fat, ill-tempered old man who feels no limit on his power and strikes fear in his subordinates. This is Henry VIII, of course. Who did you think I was describing? Now, I bring this up not because I want to talk politics. I mean, I do, but not here. But what this shows me is how we have expectations that shape everything that we take in. We have associations, expectations, and biases. We all have biases. Um, we're born into a culture that cultivates bias takes a long time to unlearn some of those. Instead of calling them biases, maybe we can think of them as privilege or as just what we are most comfortable with. So we all have those. We have those built into us in some way. I'm reminded of Sesame Street, which of these is not like the others. You know, we're brought up to look at differences, maybe instead of samenesses. But at any rate, how we think, how we approach something, the headset that we have, shapes what it is that we hear. If you are someone who's been injured by the church, for instance, or by overzealous Christians, you're going to really be turned off if you find out that I'm a minister. I was saying to one of my friends the other day, I often won't tell people that I'm a minister right off the bat. Instead, I'll say something like, oh, yeah, I had a not-for-profit that works with people on their spirituality. A lot more people are open to that than hearing that I am a Christian minister. So I'm troubled. I'm troubled by the biases that I probably carry. I mean, I do carry them, but I may not know what they are. I know some of them. I tend to be biased towards smart people. I get very impatient with people who aren't. Unless I know that they have some sort of disability or uh, cause for being slow of mind. I've had to work against that my entire life. And I'm better than I was, certainly. But it's like saying I have a bias toward left-handed people. Well, the world has a bias toward left-handed people. Look at all of the, the gadgets that are created for right-handed people. Even scissors, you know? What are yours? When you heard me read that, who did you think of? What caused you to think that way? Was it some association that you have with someone of that description? Was it some anger or frustration that you carry? I think we need to look at that. In order to become more fully open to what God would have us see. We carry it through not only in how we look at other people, but how we look at ourselves. There is a certain degree of wellness and health that's related to our expectation for it. If we keep thinking of ourselves as getting older and, oh, I'm this age, I should be feeling X, Y, or Z because I'm that age, we'll feel that way. My brother, bless his heart, uh, who just turned 80, when I said to him, how does it feel? He says, I don't know. He says, in my, in my 50s, I started purposely thinking that I was 10 years younger. So he has, for the last 30 years, 
thought of himself as 10 years younger than he is, and therefore it, he doesn't act like someone who's 80. But see, there I go with my bias. What's somebody who's 80 supposed to act like? But we do it to ourselves. Oh, I've been smoking so long, I'll, I'll probably always have this health problem. Oh, I've had so much depression in my life. It's hard for me to feel really good. Oh, I've been through so much trauma. We have to change the expectation. God creates us to be fully human, healthy, well. God delights in us. We need to start setting the expectation for ourselves that we are what God created us to be. That we have the ability to be that in which God delights. I don't know how to do that for you. I can barely figure it out for myself, but I know it has to be done. So that's the challenge for today. Let's look at what are the expectations that we have on ourselves that maybe we can change or expand, broaden, whatever they are. It's time to let go of them so that we can think of ourselves with the limitless potential for health, wellness, being, accomplishment, living into our call as believers that God has for us. Short message, kind of heady probably, but I hope it speaks to you. I'm going to be struggling with it all day, thanks to you. It's all your fault. <laughs> if I weren't doing this, I probably wouldn't have thought of it at all. But I am, and I did, so I need to deal with it. So do you. All right, see you next time. Thanks for joining me for the prayerful pause of the pastor. I'm Pastor Deb Swift of Rochester, New York, South Presbyterian Church. If you'd like to learn more about us, stay tuned to the end cap right after this at the end of the video. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. God bless. Take care. Bye for now.